Hey everyone, welcome to the Bio Breakthroughs Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Dr. Helen Torley, the CEO and president at HaloSign. How are you today? Uh, very well, thank you. I'm super excited to chat with you. We can, we can start off talking. Usually I say, let's dive in, but people have been making fun of me lately because I say the same thing on every single episode and then they made a little mashup and I did. So <laughs> let's start off with you telling the audience about your background. Yeah, I, I'm uh, actually uh, trained as a physician uh, and uh, as a rheumatologist, uh, and I'm from Scotland. And I spent the first five years of my career really focused on individual patient care. Uh, I was doing clinical trials at that time, and I then got the opportunity to move to the United States and continue development of one of the drugs I was working on for rheumatoid arthritis uh, that ultimately got approved and uh, was an advance at that time for patients. Uh, I really liked being in the industry, being able to to develop drugs that could touch so many people. And so for the last 30 plus years, I have been in different roles in the pharmaceutical industry from drug development where I started to medical affairs, which is where you do clinical studies that really help physicians identify how, when and where to use specific drugs. So that was a very exciting part of my career. Then I moved into uh, global commercialization uh, thinking about right from the start, what a drug we were developing in, for example, transplantation, what it should look like, uh, what, what to tell the scientists we needed. That was a very exciting part as well. I spent time in sales and uh, general management, uh, really building a business um, in areas like nephrology, but also in bone health, and ultimately was a chief commercial officer. And that's when I decided I wanted to become a chief executive officer and selected Halozyme. Uh, so Halozyme at the time was a, a company that had several exciting uh, data readouts, and uh, it was a it was a very fun time to come into the company to try and identify what the strategy for future growth should be, and that was in 2014. And talk us through where things are at today with the company. Give us that that overview. Yeah, today we are a company that is very focused on bringing forward disruptive solutions to uh, help. Uh, reduce the burden of treatment for patients and potentially improve outcomes. Now, what does that mean, reducing the burden? Um, today, many patients receive important medicines by long intravenous infusions, uh, cancer drugs, um, drugs for multiple sclerosis, drugs for autoimmune disease. Uh, what we have are two technologies that allow you to get your drugs in shorter, simpler injections under the skin. That's called subcutaneous injections. And as an example, one of our partners, Janssen, has a wonderful drug that's called um, Darzalex for patients with a cancer called multiple myeloma. Uh, many patients get that in a four to six hour long IV infusion. Uh, so that, that is very burdensome, obviously, for the patient. Um, Janssen collaborated with us to develop a subcutaneous version that is given in just three to five minutes. If you imagine you're somebody suffering for cancer, you're taking your, your loved ones to the infusion suites instead of that very long full day um, spent there uh, in the infusion suite getting treatment, you can have a much shorter three to five minute injection. So that when you, you think about that and we're very passionate about this reducing the burden, um, it's a scary time when you're uh, having these serious diseases, anything that can be done to have you feel back to normal, be less tired because you're not spending all day in a hospital infusion suite. That's our passion and that's what we do at Halosign. And I want to spend some time having you dive into, um, I might mess this up, but and en Hans. And, that's and right. Is that yeah. how, did I say it right? You did. Awesome. Uh, so that's your, that's your drug delivery network. Can you explain to the audience how that works? Yes, yeah, so Enhance is an enzyme, uh, and it's uh, an enzyme that um, targets and, and um, degrades uh, a sugar that exists all through your body, but in particular, it's part of your subcutaneous space. So, you know, if you feel your skin and your arms, there's kind of a, 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 a an elasticity to it. But underneath the skin, you've got a lot of this gel called hyaluronin. And when you try to inject anything under the skin, you may have experienced that after about one milliliter, a very small volume, you start to get back pressure and you can't inject any further. And that's because the hyaluronin is there filling all the space. Now, what our enzyme does, what we do is co-formulate it with our partner products. Um, it works then to be, when it's injected, works virtually instantaneously to start to degrade that hyaluronin and create channels. Uh, so that when you're injecting fluid, it can spread over a much bigger volume 
creating, if you like, a little pancake as opposed to a big hard lump. Uh, and then that allows that drug to be exposed to the lymphatics and be absorbed. Uh, and so we, we can do that. Um, there is one of our drugs that's approved where the patient can have up to 300 mLs in a single setting. But generally our drugs are 10 mLs given over three to five minutes. And then the, uh, the great thing is that the hyaluronin, it works very uh, quickly for it to degrade, but it also comes back over 24 hours. So your skin returns to normal. So think about it, that it just creates a little pocket um, to be able to deliver the drug, let it be absorbed, then your skin returns to normal. And um, it's really quite remarkable how it works. We are uh, partnered with um, 12 leading companies. We have six approved products globally. Um, we have got another 13 uh, in development. And so we're, we, we, we are seeing more and more companies really putting the patient first and thinking about how they can ease that burden of treatment for them. And, and what's been, what you, can, what you can tell us here today, um, what's been the, the, the patient like give it, give me some thoughts I, again only if you can on on the patient experience here in receiving these these medi uh, medications yeah, our partners, and I'll say Roche, Janssen, others have done surveys of patients who have gone from the IV treatment to the subcutaneous treatment. And 85 to 90% of patients express a very strong preference um, for the subcutaneous uh, because it is shorter and, and it overall reduces the burden. Uh, we, we recently had a patient come and talk to the staff here at, at, at Halozyme, our team, uh, which, which we find incredibly important when you're working to actually have somebody who's receiving the drugs come back and tell us what it has meant to their lives and for, for this patient there's actually a, a wonderful lady who had um, myasthenia gravis so that's a condition that causes a lot of serious muscle weakness uh, she received one of our partner drugs it's called Vibcart Hytrulo she was getting it subcutaneously she was actually part of a clinical study that um, was allowing her to do that injection herself once a week for four weeks at home uh, and so she just talked about the control she felt she had over her disease. Uh, the ability to do it at home was amazing for her after having gone through some of earlier types of therapy where she was spending a lot of time in hospital infusion suites. I, you know, she talked about how it just transformed her to focus less on her disease, more about wellness and getting on with her life. And so uh, that uh, we, we, we hear overwhelming stories of that type of reaction when patients can get these drugs. The life-saving drug is the important part. The subcutaneous reduces the burden. And I have to ask you this because in healthcare, the, the big word is always impact, right? With, with uh, Halozyme's this breakthrough technology that, that you've created, what is the impact on, on just healthcare broadly, but then the healthcare systems in particular? Yeah, again, we work with wonderful partners like um, Roche, who have done many um, health outcome studies to really document and understand the impact um, on patients, but also the healthcare system. And they, they've done time and motion studies as an example that shows that because of that difference in the number of hours that healthcare professionals from the pharmacists to the nurses to the doctors are spending overseeing patient, it, it results in substantial savings to the healthcare system. Uh, I'll give you an example I was just reviewing with the team Fezgo, which is a drug Roche has for uh, women with breast cancer. It's a combination drug actually of two of their great breast cancer drugs, one called um, Herceptin, the other one called Progetta. Um, if you're getting the IV, you need to get the IV infusion of one then the IV infusion of the other, and that takes many hours. The injection for Fezgo, which is a single injection of 10 mLs, um, takes five minutes. Uh, and so what we saw was the non-drug related costs were reduced by 80 percent um, in Europe, but also in the United States. And so um, that's the first thing is, is the overall cost of the healthcare system goes low. But Jared, as you may have heard, that there's also a bigger issue emerging around the world of infusion suite capacity constraints. There aren't enough chairs and there isn't enough time for everybody to get, be getting their therapy and to be getting it on time. And so another advantage of the sub -Q that's been documented is the ability to have better patient throughput. Uh, in the time it would take you to treat one Darzalex patient, imagine that four to six hours, um, you can 
I've got the three to five minute injection. Um, you can treat many patients. And so that's another really important um, thing. And I think why we're seeing more sub Q therapies being developed is the recognition uh, that IV uh, capacity constraints are real. They're going to get worse with the um, advent of the Alzheimer's drugs. So the option for a patient to be treated closer to home with a short, simple sub Q is things many companies are now embracing. And throughout this episode, you've mentioned a few times, right, your your robust partnership that that you formed. And I know how important in your space these these relationships are. How you you already told us a little bit, but how do these partnerships impact the the overall business? And and what type of partnerships and relationships are you still actively, you know, searching for? I guess if, if you can if you can share that. So we, we, we have 12 partnerships, as I mentioned so far, or collaborations is another word to, to say about it. And our role in the collaboration is mostly advisory. We advise on the co-formulation of the product, the clinical trial design, but our partners are the ones responsible for the actual execution uh, of it. Now, what the great news is, is we work in um, joint development teams sharing information we share our expertise they obviously make the decisions they want to do uh, but it's uh, with um, six approved products and many products having gone through regulatory reviews we can bring a lot of insights and advice to help partners think through how to do this in a way that gets the products to, to patients quickly um, we have an active role in providing the drug substance or the api so a lot of our team focus on doing that and being um, on time and very high quality of our, of our api uh, that's our our role and, and the benefit of this business model is obviously that it's um, very lean uh, and it's leverageable we can add new partnerships without having to expand the team dramatically and so we are actively looking always for new drugs that could potentially benefit the patients by being able to be transformed from a lengthy IV infusion um, into a subcutaneous injection and I will say we uh, a year ago acquired a company that's got some auto injectors for smaller volume delivery um, which uh, we're also uh, actively seeking partners to expand that. And we've got some just uh, very exciting data on uh, developing what we're calling a high volume auto injector, which would be the ability to deliver up to 10 milliliters in uh, well under a minute. Uh, and so uh, we will grow by expanding these numbers of relationships and, and supporting these partners in getting uh, uh, reducing the burden of treatment for patients. It sounds like there's a lot to be excited about, but in terms of what's next, what are you excited about moving forward that you can share with us here today? Yeah, it, it, I will say it is this advent of a high volume auto injector. Uh, nobody in the industry, to our knowledge, has been able to do this. And it's because of the combination of our two unique uh, technologies, Enhance and the auto injector um, expertise that we um, we acquired last year when we acquired this company. Uh, this, we believe, is going to allow us to add new partnerships and um, offer patients another option. Uh, you can imagine you're on some important therapy and you're able to give it to yourself at home in well under a minute, as opposed to having to go to the doctor's office and all, all the rest of it. So, you know, it's a, the advent of the high volume auto injector is very much in line with our mission to bring forward disruptive solutions. Uh, I will say, uh, as a successful business, we also are looking to add new drug delivery technologies. We think there's more can be done uh, for patients, and um, we, we are very active in looking for additional acquisitions to broaden our offerings for our, our uh, collaborators and partners. Well, I want to thank you once again for, for joining me on the Bio Breakthroughs podcast and, and sharing your story and telling us more about Halozyme. And I can't wait to have you come back on in the near future and, and give us an update on where things are at and, and talk more about the industry. Appreciate that, Darren. Thanks so much.